And welcome to another week of 72 Pin Connector Podcast. With us today, we have Adam Jordan. Hello. Welcome. And Tom Webster. Howdy, everyone. And myself, Eric Fine. Sorry about that adjustment. I bumped my monitor and that stuff got a little wonky. That's fine. So how are you guys doing this week? Good. Hateful. Not too bad. I'm glad you guys are doing good. I have had two days straight work from home because I am feeling like ass. Oh, uh, that sucks. You got Nintendo fever. I know what happened. <laughs> Nintendo. No, that is not Nintendo fever. Oh, you caught the Pac-Man fever. <sighs> you have Space Invaders, Chris? I can go no, on. There are other gaming conditions. <laughs> I have a gaming condition. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, so what have you guys been playing this week? Um actually a decent amount. Um I got in all of my live gaming for the week today. Um I, I guess I'll uh I'll kick us off. Yeah. Uh, I did play it. some of the Witcher. Uh I'm still in chapter two weeks. I'm trying to do all the side quests perfectly. Um and that just <laughs> You're never gonna get forever. If you keep doing side quests, you'll never get through those games. Yeah, <laughs> I know. But it's it's a big RPG, and they're designed to be you know side oh, quests. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that makes I'm sense. I'm running side quests, uh, and it's good. Um, I like the game. I can see now the complaints about combat and why people don't really like it. Mm-hmm. But I, you know, it's it's not as bad, especially if you, um, if you're used to. Something like World of Warcraft. Did you ever play World of Warcraft or, or other MMOs? Um, no. I, well, <laughs> the closest thing to an MMO I played was like RuneScape in high school. Okay. I don't. I don't know that that counts. <laughs> like, I. But I think everybody had their RuneScape phase. Um, yeah, I played a shit ton of RuneScape. <laughs> yeah. Way too much, and I really want mm-hmm. to admit. Yeah, now I, I I also jumped on the RuneScape craze. <laughs> I didn't get like install bot to auto mine phase intense, but like I played a lot of RuneScape when I was that age. Uh, so yeah, I might have lab. botted. You botted. I may have botted a little nice. bit. Yeah, nice. I, I feel like a douche for saying you're, that. You're <laughs> a bad person. You're just a terrible person. Man, after you put a couple hundred hours of swinging a freaking axe at a tree, you just want to say, hey, do that for me. Or play a game that isn't designed to be so unnecessarily grindy. <laughs> yeah, that is true. But, but yeah. that is the MMOs. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. So Witcher Combat feels kind of like World of Warcraft, kind of like an, an MMO. It's not great by any means. Um, it's nothing to write home about, but it's passable. It, it won't detract from the entire game. Yeah. Um, so other than The Witcher, um, I actually, I have a confession. As a classic gamer, I realize mm-hmm. this is a sin. But uh, as a kid, I loved Donkey Kong Country. and I played the shit out of it and beat it multiple times. I never got into two or three. I just didn't. I didn't buy them. I played other games instead. I was obsessed with Star Fox and Zelda and Metroid, and I just never got into Donkey Kong Country two or three. So I decided, all right, I'm going to use my new retro system, which I'll talk about in a bit, um, and get through Donkey Kong Country two. Um, I love Donkey Kong Country. I love it. It's tight controls. It's a beautiful game. The audio is fantastic, uh, and it's just been a bunch of fun. Um, I like Donkey Kongs. They're fun. I never even owned an SNES, though. Oh, really? Okay. Oh. I was NES Genesis 64. You know, I, so I kind of had that gap over the Saturn. I don't think Saturn I did SNES. either. I want to think maybe we like rented one from Blockbuster for a little while, but I don't think I actually owned a Super Nintendo. I was a Genesis kid growing up, but I yeah. did. I did fix that. Later in life, I did the Genesis PlayStation jump. <laughs> yeah, I went Genesis 64, but my buddy had a SNES, and I played a shit ton of Mario Kart and Zombies Ate My Neighbors. Ah, uh, love Zombies Ate love My Neighbors. Um, I remember um, playing through that at 16 bit arcade. 
They had oh, that up on a big yeah. TV and people were just rotating around the controller. <laughs> I went to the Proto Build Bar here in, in Dayton. and uh, was they that? Had, they, that? That's a cool place. It's it's pretty neat. Um, a friend of a friend actually works works there. So we stopped in to, see, to visit and they had the Zombies Ate My Neighbors cabinet on like a big emulate. They had a big emulation cabinet thing that you could play multiple arcade games on. We played that for a little bit. It had a multiple arcade machine emulator yeah. cabinet or, or a MAME cabinet. Yes, yes. Um, but the coolest thing they had was, I'm pretty sure this is the only one. It's a game. I don't know who made it, but it's uh, it's a fighting game arcade. You know, it's a full cabinet, full get up. It's Benjamin Franklin versus Nikolai Tesla. And the oh. the buttons and the joysticks are made out of metal and the loser gets shocked. Yes. Yes, oh, I've seen that. I've and, it heard increase, this. and it increases in intensity as you go through the rounds against somebody. And it's that it's, amazing. A, it's a pretty good shock too. Like it forces you to remove your hands from it kind of shock. I've always um there was also a <laughs> in home game that was similar to that where yeah. it had a small battery and sent a jolt. It was whoever was the slowest yeah. to grab it got shocked. Yeah. Now That's that fantastic. being said the actual gameplay like the fighting game gameplay was garbage like it was not a good like fun game to play but the gimmick made it entertaining for sure i wish you could like uh, jack jack that stuff into uh like legit fighting games you know take someone yeah. on a street fighter 2 <laughs> although last yeah. time i played street fighter 2 on an arcade cabinet i suck i am terrible at all fighting games yeah i've um, got one niche and that's tekken tekken okay. go to i love tekken but last time I was at Arcade Legacy uh, in Cincinnati, Ohio, stop by if you have a chance. Um, I, I walked in and they're having a Tekken tournament. I was like, yeah, why not? I'll throw down <laughs> the Tekken tournament. And I got toyed with for like five minutes before the guy just did like some ultra awesome combo thing and wrecked <laughs> my shit. And he was he was like the bottom of the ladder. And I was like, yeah, yeah. OK, I'm, uh, I'm no good at Tekken. <laughs> But uh, those guys Tag was my thing. Love Tag. I love all Tekken games. Tekken 3, though, that was my favorite. That was my real introduction point. My cousin brought that over. It was Tag, or not Tag, it was 3 and FF7. Yes. That was my introduction to a PlayStation. Did you guys play that stupid Tekken Tag bowling minigame way more than you should have? (laughs) Yes. What do you mean stupid? What do you mean stupid? I played that probably just as much as the actual game. That needs to be an eSport. That is an eSport right there. (laughs) Tekken Tag bowling (laughs) eSport. Did you unlock the jukebox from it? This year is earlier. What? Did you unlock the jukebox from it? Oh, I don't. I don't remember. It's been so. I long. think it was if you bowled two hundred. I don't know if it was with anyone or with so many people. Uh-huh. It unlocked um, a jukebox that you could play all the different music if you wanted. Oh, cool! That's kind of neat. Um, I don't remember that. Um, I have uh, gotten into uh, me and a buddy decided to get back into playing chess uh, because it's a game that we can just throw on our phones and then when we have a couple minutes, make a move and then walk away. Um, and there's a great website uh, called LeeChess.org, L-I-Chess.org. And I know it's not a typical video game, it's not typical gaming, but it's a game, and they've got it's a nice Android game. app. Um, 100% free, there's no paid anything, you can donate if you want. Completely open source, if you wanted to run your own, you could. Uh, and it's just wonderful. Uh, so the way we use the app is, you know, he sent me a challenge and then he makes a move and it notifies me and then I can make my move. It's like words with friends, but with chess, essentially. Um, Hmm. but yeah, it's a good time. Check that out. If you are at all interested in chess, uh, that's really about all there is to say about that. Uh, but I I used to play something like that. I have vibes doing merchandising. Now what? What Tom? I have vibed all day today, or most of the day. Today. Um, so I decided, all right, I'm lazy. I've been sitting on my ass too much, playing a bunch of Donkey Kong. I should get up and move around. Um, I put on the Vive, and I threw on Vanishing Realms and Space Pirate Trainer, and the whole world in the Vive was shifting and throwing me into the floor, and my hands were floating away. It was horrible. One of the worst VR experiences I have had in a very long time. 
Um, so I was like, what the fuck is going on? So I, I look and Steam pops up the little thing like, hey, literally all of your firmware, it's like three months out of date. Uh, you should fix that. Uh, so I went through and I updated every single device. That actually makes a difference, believe it or not. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I updated the firmware, but most of my problems went away. Mm-hmm. When I first got my Vive, um, it was weird. I don't know if this is a manufacturing issue, but my controllers were in two different firm or firmware model or versions. Yes, that oh, happened to me wow. too. That sounds to like that my would be <laughs> very unfortunate. Well, yeah, because my left one was working perfect. Yeah, but yep. when I tried to use my right and it was on the basic tutorial, I couldn't hit directions. It only recognized touch, like the center touch, and that was oh. it. Yeah. So I'm like, fuck, I just spent all this money on this fucking thing, and the controller's broke as shit. <laughs> and then I plug it in, it does a firmware update, and boom! Right. Everything just works. It's just magic. Uh, um, didn't they? Yeah. Aren't they working on like an updated uh, headset? Like something that makes it more comfortable to wear? It's... I I've heard that's all been new, rumors. Yeah, I wouldn't okay. call it a new headset. I did see that um, at CES, which was uh, shown off, uh, mm-hmm. there's a company working on a battery pack uh, and wireless transmission, Intel's Y-Gig technology. So you can wear this thing completely wirelessly without a cord, which would be very helpful in a game like Thrill of the Fight, which is an early access boxing title that I bought for 10 bucks earlier today. Uh, unfortunately, I've beaten almost all the content. It's not a bad game. I did break my internal rule of buying something early access, <laughs> yeah. but... It's hard to buy a Vive game that's not. Uh, just about everything that's released true. on the Vive is tagged early access. Right. Yeah, but they stay in this terrible limbo where they keep the early access tag on it and just keep building, and then they yeah. just leave it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm hoping this game doesn't turn out that way. Um, I don't think it will. The developer is on uh, is on Steam, and people there's a guy that gave it a bad review he said i like this game but here's my list of issues and here's why it just dips into the negative for me to be a bad experience the developer commented back and said thanks for the feedback uh you know here's the list of things i'm currently working on i've taken this and this into consideration if you want to join the forums over here these people have the same complaint uh, it's, it, the developer is really listening to the community. Um, eventually, er, uh, initially, he was going to style the game as sort of like an arcade-ish boxing game, punch-out style. It mm-hmm. turns out the community and the people who bought the game want a realistic, not boxing simulator, but definitely a more realistic boxing game. Uh, mm-hmm. And so he's going to retool everything he's done. Um, is he wow. t- thinking about doing multiplayer with it? Because that would be fun. I don't know. Uh, that would be very fun, but in playing against the computer opponents, at least the way they're doing the boxing now, it's really easy to to screw with stuff. Um, it's really easy to cheat the game. So, I do not box. I barely walk. And um, I, I walked up to this opponent, and I, I love the vibe, because when you're talking about video games, you're saying, well, I walked up to this dude, and I, like, stabbed him with a sword. It's like, no, you use the control stick, you moved forward, and you hit a button. No, but in the vibe, I walked up to this dude, I held his arms with my one arm, and then I just kept punching his stomach with the other, and he couldn't do anything. <laughs> it was possibly the worst boxing anyone has ever done. Uh, but I beat the guy, and I beat two opponents that way. It really shouldn't happen. Um, there wasn't really any skill involved whatsoever. Um, the dodging felt very janky. Sometimes I would feel like I totally dodged that, and I would get hit in the face anyway. Other times, I should have gotten hit, and somehow it got blocked. It's early access. I'd say if you're really looking to jump around, pick it up, but don't expect the world. Yeah. Um, that's actually a lot of VR games right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, They're all just really cool tech demos. But I'd like to see a good boxing game for VR. That that seems like a good type of game for something like that. It's great. It's, it's you know, one of the things that I really loved about the promise of the Wii until I realized that Wii boxing <laughs> is you can literally just do this the whole time and wave your hands around and somehow you win. I um, liked that, though. That was my fa- probably my favorite thing on the Wii was boxing. And I think my favorite was probably golf. I really liked Wii Golf. Um, but it was fun. Um, so I played some Vanishing Realms, because I, I desperately want 
a skill-based Dark Souls-ish experience where if I fuck up, I know I fucked up, and the game will punish me, and I have to get better as a VR person swinging a sword and using a shield. And the closest thing I've got to that is Vanishing Realms on hard mode. And it's not really that hard. Uh, the only time I died was when you can light stuff on fire now, if you haven't played it in a while. Um, so I took the torch, and I'm in like this little pit area, and there's hay all around me. I was like, oh, cool, I can just light this stuff on fire and pick up all the treasure underneath, because they hide stuff in here now. Um, I set fire to it, and the fire actually moves from flammable object to flammable object, which is pretty cool, and something you don't usually see in VR. <laughs> and uh, I, I burned to death. I didn't realize that that was a thing. I don't know why I didn't realize that was a thing, but yeah, I yeah. totally burned death in this tiny little pit of despair. I think spreading fire is pretty intuitive naturally. So uh, yeah, that was your fault. Yeah, it <laughs> yeah was. that was hundred percent you. Hey, there's a bunch of flammable stuff in this pit. I'm gonna jump yeah. down there and light a fire and try not to die. Yeah, now you die. Uh, so, Vanishing Realms. If you haven't played it, it's Zelda esque. I, I guess you could call it. Um, it's definitely not nearly as deep. Uh, yeah. Irk, you've got Vanishing Realms, right? Yeah, I was actually going to say um, I would put it more towards um, the, there's no RPG element like Skyrim with skills, but the actual gameplay, I'd put it more on Skyrim than Zelda. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I could give you that. Um, but yeah, it's it was weird because it's very hands hand holdy at beginning. Uh, the enemies don't move. They'll attack you, but you have to go up to them. And uh, then all of a sudden you come out of this cave and you realize, Oh fuck, this is for real now. And they're <laughs> charging you and stuff. But and then there are I, guys with crossbows and then mages throwing fireballs. Yeah. And I, it was okay. It was fun. Um, she loves the game to me. It's, it's okay. Um, there's, it's exploitable. There's a lot of ways yes. to get around things. Since it's VR, dip your head out, shoot a fireball, get back in, you don't yeah. get hurt. I, I know that's my fault for playing that way, but to me it's one of those things where, man, I... If it's that easily exploitable, there's got to be something they could do better, though. Gotten better. Yeah. So it used to be that in Vanishing Realms, you could, because... The best way I've heard it put, and I, I wish I knew who said this, is uh, in VR games, no clip is permanently turned on. So you have to build your game around that. So you have to build your game around people walking through walls and walking through your locked doors. In Vanishing mm -hmm. Realms, there would be locked doors where you'd have to kill enemies or uh, solve a puzzle to find a key. And instead, people would, it wouldn't let you teleport through the door, but they'd teleport right up to the door, take two steps forward, and then they could teleport the rest of the way. Because they could just walk through the door. Um, they did eventually fix that. So if you clip into the geometry, it pushes you back. Um, it's a little weird. Uh, I get why it does that. It's fairly effective. It's not perfect by any means. Um, but it still has the issue of my buddy ran up to an enemy, stood inside of his shield and his, his sword, and started like <laughs> slashing like crazy in front of him and killed guys that way. I'm I'm standing back with my sword and shield, you know, getting, uh, you know, parrying stuff and getting precise hits in, and he just walks up and stands inside of a skeleton and spins around. Like, yeah. get, you're, you're taking all the fun out of it. <laughs> I also found the sword play to be really clunky. Yeah. I, I think it's gotten better. Uh, you can now parry with the sword way more effectively, and enemies properly telegraph their moves. So there's a skeleton, he's, you know, got this big overhand swing. You can hold your sword up now, parry that away to the side, and then come in for a repost. Hmm. I will say this about the game. It does two things very well. Um, one, it gets you immersed very well. Very well. Um, this was one of the first games I played in my old apartment in Columbus. And she's playing it, and she's going to town, swinging the sword, just going crazy. And I'm not paying full attention. Next thing I know, she hits me with the Wii or the Vive remote. <laughs> I'm like, whoa. But um, another thing they tend to do is they'll detect when you're close to the boundary, intentionally pause the game, force you to walk to the middle of your boundary, and then resume. You so can't that you turn that won't off. Leave. You, you should turn never that turn that off. You should never turn that off. I turn it off. I run into things, but I turn it off because it, it annoys me. That in my Vive, the way I've got it set up right now is every time I take a step, I'm nearing a boundary. 
and it knows it. I know where stuff is, right? If I swing this way, I'm not going to, like, clock the couch. If, if I step too far, I'll fall into the couch. That's okay. Um, but yeah, Vanishing Realms, if you don't have it, if you do have a Vive, I'd say it's worth picking up. I enjoyed it, and they are developing more episodes and more levels. How much is it? 20? 25? I think it's 20. It's one of the more expensive VR experiences, but it yeah. is one of the more complete, I guess you can say. Yeah, okay. definitely. You yeah. can tell it's not a finished game, but what they right. have is very well done. It's more yeah. than a tech That's demo. Good. It's more than three skeletons in a room that you throw a sword at. Yeah. That's how I feel. About that, that. Did you guys ever play The Forest? No. It's not, it's not VR, it looks... but it's, it's still an early access, but it's actually like pretty fleshed out and regularly updated so they've done a pretty good job with that that game looked so good i just never got it yeah i think fun. it's been on my wish list for a year yeah i think i eventually removed it because i realized i'm probably never gonna buy it but it did look really <laughs> really good uh there is a uh an early access fi- uh, valve title <laughs> uh, valve doesn't make <laughs> yeah. it anymore um, there's an early access Vive title uh, out there that I will heavily recommend and say everyone should go pick up immediately. It is early oh. access. I do break all my rules. Hot dogs, horseshoes, and hand grenades. Oh my god, it's the most fun thing ever because it's not <laughs> a game. There's no winning. There's no end goal. The only thing you do is it's a sandbox and they've got explosives and they've got toys and they've got guns. They've got an ungodly amount of guns. If you want, like, a Dragon's Breath shotgun shell auto-firing through, like, an auto-loaded clip at stuff that'll explode, like like terracotta pot potted plants, you can do that. If you want to launch clay pigeons and, and take them out with the fully automatic AK-47s that are perfectly modeled, you can do that. But it's not like, you know, I'm a... You know, I've got video game style guns where I'm going to press a button and it'll reload and I can pew pew all day long. To reload your AK-47, you grab your AK-47, you pick your mag up off the table. But it, first, you have to take your empty one out, right? So you grab it, you have to hold the, the mag release, pull it out, put the new one in, and make sure you pull the, the slide hammer back. It's accurately modeled guns as accurate as you can get in a video game and they work just like the real things it is absolutely fantastic so i will not tell people to buy it because i think it's honestly it's really expensive for what it is but those guns the way they have them modeled is unreal i want them to release those models for other games to use i know oh the yeah fact that you you have like it'll you'll have to pull back and just it's insane. I've never seen a game model a you gun your, to a your Glock like that. And, and, you know, pull back the slide. And if you keep pulling it back on a real gun, when you keep pulling back the slide like that, bullets will fly out. That happens with your guns. <laughs> Can you imagine is, something like this integrated oh, into a game like Arma? Oh, that would be amazing. That would be amazing. The only thing um, I, I can I can knock it for is if you try to do like the cool James Bond thing where you pick up like two fully automatic shotguns, you realize very quickly that it's a bitch to reload because then you've got to put your guns down and grab some shells and then pop them in one at a time. There's no magic reload. Yeah. Oh, so it shows that the James Bond shit's bullshit. <laughs> yes, yes. But uh, oh, they, they do thought? have bananas that you can light the fuse on, and they're banana bombs. So, not completely realistic, but still a lot of fun. Oh, grenade ski ball. That's all I have to say on that. You don't really need to say anything else. Yeah, grenade ski ball. That's it. That's, yeah, I'm, I'm on board. <laughs> Game. <laughs> so what have you been playing, Adam? Uh, no, well, not really much of anything. Um, I played a little Rocket League, I think, Tuesday, but then Wednesday, I had an unfortunate uh, thumb-smashing accident at work, so... <laughs> I'm sorry, um, I shouldn't laugh, but that's funny. Yeah, no, I'm not like, it didn't like break it, I don't think, or anything like that, but like, uh, yeah, you can't really Aww. see it, but it's still swollen, so I haven't really, I've been taking it easy with that, I didn't want to injure it more or whatever, so... What haven't really been do? able to play much. But I did play a little bit of, well, what I do as far as getting it hurt. Yeah. Oh, um, kind of hard to explain. 
I was pulling a giant heavy cart full of stuff, and my thumb got lodged between the handle of that cart and the handle of another cart behind me that I didn't know was there. Oh, so, smash. <laughs> yeah, that was a little bit uncomfortable for a while. That's an entirely different <laughs> kind of Super Smash Brothers. Yes. That's a very anyway. dad way of saying it hurt like hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it hurt, it hurt like hell for a little while. Um, not so much anymore, thankfully. So I didn't really do much gaming. Um, kind of hurts to move my thumb in a way that an analog stick would be need to be moved. So no Rocket League. Uh, but I played GeoGuessr. Have you guys ever played GeoGuessr? Or have yes. you, did I show you GeoGuessr? Oh wait, yeah, is cool. yeah, I've this is that. cool. It uses uh, so it uses Google Street View, and it plops you in a random spot in anywhere in the world, pretty much. And you have to use your surroundings and make your guess, best guess at where you are. So this is really cool because it could drop you in the middle of Paris. It could drop you um, somewhere in New Zealand on some middle of nowhere country road in Arizona or Nevada. It's so we were playing cool. this at work. Yeah. We were playing this at work one day. We got dropped in Louisiana and we were guessing it was somewhere in Africa. Yeah. It just this, like, <laughs> so it's weird. Back dirt it's weird road when you get to area. Spots. A lot of it is uh, walking around in Google Street View trying to find like a sign or seeing what side of the car what side of the road are the cars driving on. Or does that look if like a Euro European li- Yeah, place. is that a European looking car or license plate? Uh, stuff like that. It's pretty cool. Today, I actually, I narrowed it down to, I was like 100 feet away or something like that. Nice. Really? Yeah. I ended up seeing, um, I saw like the name of a business had the name of the town in it. And then nice. an- another building had the name of the state on it. So then I, I went to an intersection that had two uh major state highways intersecting (laughs) so (laughs) just zoom right on in and find where those highways are and then find the name of the town and then i was able to narrow it down like between the two streets where i landed so now i get the feeling that so satisfying when you get one someone could take these features and build Mm -hmm. them into a bigger game like that could be like a part of a game where they spawn you somewhere kind of like Ah, shit. What was that Arma mod that got really popular with the zombies that I'm blanking on? Uh, Daisy. Daisy. Daisy, yes. Sort of like Daisy, but, you know, worth playing for more than an hour. Yeah. I can't knock Daisy. I, I really liked it, but I just wasn't any good. So there's actually multiple playlists on um, GeoGuessr 2. So there's like a random one. There's one that's like, it'll only drop you somewhere in Paris and you have to use your surroundings to guess what like street you're on and stuff. There's ones where it's only, you know, certain parts of the country or all of them in one country. There's one for just the United States. I'm sure there's one for just Germany or something. One just hmm. for Urbana. Um, Ohio. And then there's, there's also head to head. So you can, you can match up with somebody and whoever gets closer to that same destination you're both dropped at gets more points and you kind of go head to head and compete. So that's kind of cool too. That would be fun. Yeah. If you can make something competitive, I am all for it. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's a pretty neat game. Uh, Obviously it doesn't cost anything. It's just a website. You don't need to download anything. So it's kind of neat to mess around with for sure. It's GeoGuessr without the E. So (laughs) GeoGuessr.com. Er. Er. (laughs) You know the trend of removing the E before the R on the company names. But isn't the latest trend to end in like .io as your top level domain? Yeah. And are we are we still also, doing like the reflections on websites or is that old old hat? I don't know. No, but if I you, think that's old. If you're designing yeah. products, so you have to make sure that your your uh, your name doesn't have any vowels in it. You just take out the vowels. I'll keep that in <laughs> mind for my game dev company. <laughs> if it sounds like you're clearing your throat, it's a good name. Gundover.io. Like, uh, what are those watches? Movement watches, but it's MVMT. <laughs> Something like that. It's like, don't be so lazy in your it's name, you have to fucking abbreviate it. <laughs> See, that's pretty much all the gaming I've done this week. I haven't really done too much. What about you, Eric? Well, been busy for the first part of the week and then got sick as hell. Um, luckily, I have a Steam link downstairs, so I was able to do a little bit of big picture. Yeah. Um, today, actually, 
uh, game I've been waiting for finally came into early access. Um, hmm. I was part of the closed beta, and then I got in once the early access opened up. I bought it, and it picked right up from the progress. Uh, Behemoth has released Pit People for early access. Pit People. This is a tactics style game, turn based, um, kind of a checkered board, or not really checkered. It's hex hex pieces, but you move your piece players around and you attack people. Okay. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with like Final Fantasy Tactics, Ogre Tactics, those style of games. Oh yes, yes. it's that I'm with familiar with the style. It's like that with hex, but it's behemoth humor. So the people who brought you like Castle Crashers and Battle Block Theater. Oh, those people is behind this. Yes, nice. Um, it's it's fun. It's still early access. The story doesn't have a whole lot to it, mm-hmm. but there's a lot of side quests you can pick up and do. Mm. It's a little open world while being that so like um think of like final fantasy how you had like a little dude on the map and when you ran into him you went to a battle scene yeah yeah that's how this is you oh, see cool. a person on the map when you run into him you go into a big battle screen that's pretty cool um it's pretty cool it's 15 bucks um if you enjoy behemoth humor and you like tactic style games this is definitely it's good it's solid um, they're a trustworthy dev. I'm not afraid to go in with them early access. Yeah. 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 Does, they've, they've always built good stuff. So, so does the, the, the strategic element of like the combat or whatever seem pretty deep? Does it seem. So it's built in a way where there, it, it can layer. Cause there is some yeah. status effects that can happen. You can freeze some people. Mm-hmm. Um, if people have helmets, you don't want to go at them with swords. You want to go at them with a blunt object. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, there, there is, like, some rock, paper, scissors element to it and some yeah. status effects, but it's not super deep. This isn't a game you have to study for 15 hours to learn how to play. <laughs> well, that's good, I guess. In, in it's classic a very, behemoth style, you can jump yeah. in. It's got yeah. some depth, but, you know. I think that's yeah, important not, being able to just jump in and play and enjoy it. I think that's a, that's a really good quality to have. They're a lighthearted company. They're not going to give you a JRPG well, style yeah. game yeah, of course. where it takes you s- such a long time to get into it. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's good. I would suggest it. Um, I know one other person that has it. He enjoys it a lot. He was also a big Battle Blocks fan and Castle Crashers, so definitely worth it. Um, and then I played a little bit of Electric Super Hot. Electronic Super Hot. It's um, interesting. It's a platformer. It's got cool music, but mm. I've only got like an hour into it. So I'm I thought not you sure were talking yet. about the shooter super hot. No, 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 no. Different. You Actually, mean I think I. Electric I think I just super joy. There. Joy, yes, not shot. Super Whoops. Okay. Electric super joy. Um, it's it's an interesting platformer. Um, uh-huh. nothing to write home about yet. I'm gonna keep going. Music's cool. That's about it. Hmm. Oh, you guys should. Uh, you guys have vibes. You should check out uh, Super Hot VR. Apparently, it's really good. VR? Yeah, Super Hot, Super Hot v- Isn't the Super Hot VR only on it's... Oculus? Oh, is it really? I hope. Oh, not. But no. there, there's oh, re- no. there's Revive, and Tom already has Revive. I think I don't because I've never needed it. Any game that I actually give two shits about decides, hey, we're not gonna go with a locked in company for our game. We're gonna make this for everything. So I give those guys my money. Talk yeah, to you, developers. Uh, Talk to you. It's supposed to be really good. You're, I, I heard a few podcasts him talking about that. I've never played Super Hot, though. I haven't either. I'm assuming, have you? Talked? I have. I have. Um, I, I haven't played the full game. I played a demo or tried it out somewhere or something like that. I don't own it. Um... But it's it's good. Um, it's interesting. It's n- I'm not as happy with it as excited as I was. I'm I really butchered that sentence. Uh, I was super <laughs> excited for Super Hot. I really Words wanted escape. to love that game. Um, yeah. But it, playing it, uh, it did not meet my expectations. Uh, it was yeah. it's good, uh, but it's not what I thought it would be. If, if that's a rhythm shooter, right? 
Not uh, so no. much rhythm. The game only it's more strategic time right? only advances. Yeah, it's very strategic. Time only advances when you're moving. So uh, you can you can you know walk across a room and everyone will kill you. But if you take like three steps and then you hold, you're like, okay, I'm at a bar. The bartender is trying to kill me with his big ass shotgun. But there's a cup here, so you can take the cup and chuck it at the bartender. And then you take two steps back to dodge the shotgun shell. And then it, the glass hits the bartender and his gun flies in the air. So you can grab the gun, shoot him with it, turn around, dodge the three other guys that are shooting you, and then try to throw something, hide behind some cover while they miss all their shots. It's, it's very much a, um, a dance of death. It's very yeah. well done. Um, the story is very lackluster uh, yeah. from what I remember reading and looking at um it's okay uh it, it's yeah. nothing to write home about i don't think uh i love the idea um i think super hot 2 will be one of the greatest games ever uh, it also gave birth to one of the best little indie experiments i have ever seen uh super hotline miami which is <laughs> hotline miami oh no, really super hot yes oh, uh, I, be- I believe it's free let me let me take a look at that that, that be- sounds like that would be a crazy crazy thing that would be cool i would like to see that for sure yeah mass so if, murder a whole area <laughs> with a very technical yeah if you go to uh itch.io uh which is kind of the did you guys ever check out desura it's kind of like steam yeah. for indie games there's a uh, very little curation very much an open market there's a whole lot of shit uh, some good stuff and a bunch of weird little experiments basically if you're a, a fledgling game developer Go to itch. You can give your games away for free. You can update it. You get a Steam like interface to interact with people. Uh, I love, I love the platform. Uh, Itch.io. Uh, you can buy games on there, but you don't have to. Super mm-hmm. Hotline Miami is available there. It is free, uh, and it looks like it has been updated. I don't know when, but it says update five. So nice. Okay. Check it out. Uh, be interesting. It's very interesting from the videos I've seen. I haven't played it yet. So, there has been a little bit of news. Um, just a tick. Just a tick. Just, just a little news. Uh, we'll um, push back on the big thing for now. Um, but there was some interesting news coming out of Microsoft. And by news, I mean a fiasco that they royally, royally oh fucked my up. God, this is ridiculous. So Microsoft and their, um, I don't know how they pushed a 53 gig update for Forza Horizon. So that's about the size of the game. <laughs> so people are like, what the hell's going on? And then people are opening up. And they're finding out that they lose their saves. And then Microsoft comes out and is like, oh, we goofed. Somehow a debug version of the game got pushed. And everyone got updated to a debug version of the game. Whoops. So then they had to, then they had to turn around and push 53 more gigs <laughs> to fix it. Whoops. 106 gigs of data was pushed. And if you open the game between them, you lost your save. That sucks. So, so I apologize Whoops. to you, all the, all the podcast audio listeners because you know I just spent the entire time shaking my head and, and face palming <laughs> as hard as I possibly could. But it, it is a new week, and this is seventy two pin connector. And don't worry, I've uh, I've got this for you. Back in my day, game developers couldn't fuck up your game or fuck up your save file without trying really, really, really hard or coming to your house. Fuck Microsoft. That is such a boneheaded bullshit move. I get it happens, right? We've all fucked stuff up. We've all broken stuff at work and caused outages. But Jesus fucking Christ, do you not have QA? Do you not have a staging environment where you you push your update and some QA guy goes, why is my Xbox downloading the entirety of this game again? And they call up the developer and they go, hey, John, I think that update's broken. Oh, is it? Yeah, we shouldn't push this out to production. Oh, okay. Thanks for letting me know, Bill. And it hangs up the phone, and this shit doesn't happen. <laughs> so there, there's some stuff about this that's interesting, though. Well, yeah. it makes it more fun, I should say. It was only the PC. The Xbox One did not get this issue. But 
this was the first ever play anywhere game. So a lot of people had it installed on their PC and the Xbox One. So if people went to play it on their PC during that update, it also fucked up their Xbox One. Oh, that's and being and being one of the first play on or oh play anywheres, they probably hit a good bit. Ooh. And that that was a pretty popular title. People like their Forzas. A lot of people like the Horizon because it's not as much as a simulator. It's more of a fun version. I mm-hmm. guess you can say <laughs> the fun version. <laughs> See, it's and it's. It, I don't want to have it be a knock against Microsoft, right? This isn't a Microsoft problem. This is a problem with literally any game developer that doesn't have a staging, testing, or beta channel for their game. If they're just throwing shit at production all day, every day, without any testing at all, even automated testing, I'll let that slide. Right? Humans don't even have to touch this. But if they're not doing any testing whatsoever before they push this stuff out to everyone, they're asking for trouble. This shit does and will happen. And it has happened before. This is not the first time that a game company has pushed out a patch that's ruined save files. Yeah. Well, and if nothing else, there should have been, oh, okay, this is supposed to be a small patch. Why is a patch that should be, you know, 50 megs coming out to be 53 gigs? Right. Mistakes happen, but this should have been caught. There, there should have been a, a staging environment, or, or at least, you know, some guy that says, huh, that's a weird file size. So if the, the patch goes through, what, the Microsoft Store? Is there not like a yes. certification process or something for that? Certification? Um, what do you mean? Uh, like like uh, any update that goes through, uh, like for the PlayStation 4 for Sony games, has to go through a certification process. Um, I'm sure there is, but what's the certification so process somewhere we're going to check? So for, know, somewhere for the Xbox... Yes, because the Xbox, uh, basically all the big console manufacturers do have a big certification process when Mm -hmm. you're pushing any new code to their system because they don't want you trashing the system. Mm -hmm. If your game does something weird and it, you know, bombs out the system or it runs like shit or or even worse, if it runs great on the PS4 and runs like dog shit on the Expo, Microsoft will have your ass. Yeah, it should run and, great um, everywhere, and there, there's actually legal frameworks and, and legal text and contracts that game developers sign when they, you know, sign up to publish on these platforms, where they say your game has to meet this minimum technical specification, uh, and it and, has uh, to, Buck you know, Masterson. Be... Buck Masterson brings up one good point, though. This is Microsoft. There's a good chance that they're outside of that. True. Well, we we have to. They're not a third party. That you know that that process is in place for the Xbox. This was the Microsoft Store, right? I have no idea what it looks yeah. like on their back end. I have no idea what kind of certification, if any, certification happens on that store. So, for instance, if you want to push something out to Google Play, you just push it, right? There's no one there holding your hand. There's no one telling you you can or can't do something. If you push out, you know, malware, Google says, "Hey, uh, fuck you," and then they ban you. Um, <laughs> After they find out, right? But before then, you can get whatever you want into that store. I was just wondering how many hands were involved in it before. Like, how many people would have had to miss such a red flag? It, how, many, how many people did it go through before somebody was like, oh, wait a minute? <laughs> I can just say that someone probably lost their job. Because that's going to munch through data caps. Because that is a huge amount of data. Oh, yeah, for sure. I don't know. Why would you fire them? You just spent how many dollars training them? Maybe. (laughs) Or they didn't, and that's why this happened. Right. I was going to say, obviously, you need some more training, it looks like. but (laughs) Well, no, no. I mean, their their mistake, you know, from customers calling in, demanding refunds, screaming at customer service people, that is a cost, right? That's their training budget. On the job training. (laughs) Hey, welcome to Firefighter Academy. Uh, By the way, it's on fire. Welcome to on the job training. (laughs) So, So, other than... Other than that, there was Nintendo news, and not of the Twitch vari- or Switch variety. The NES Classic has already been hacked. Hacked. It has been broke. People Hacks. have found that it 
it has 60 slots for games and people are already rooting it out and putting 60 games on it. Nice. I guess that's nice. Um, yeah, that's, that's okay. Then the guy who found the exploits discovered there was actually a note from the developers in the console that I'm paraphrasing here, pretty much said, keep the place clean. Yeah. <laughs> Frankly, so, it's probably I thought not, that was funny. It's yeah, probably funny. not a note to, you know, the hackers or people that are going to get in. It's probably a note to other developers. So yeah. when you at his readme file, some guy goes, oh, if I fuck this place up, Bill's going to get pissed. <laughs> but uh, uh, that's that's great. But I don't know why you would, you know, if you're buying an NES classic just to just to root the box and put your own games on it. Why wouldn't you instead buy a Raspberry Pi 3 and load RetroPie on it? And <laughs> this is my mini review of a piece of software. Uh, so the NS Classic is great. And if you want something to give your friends and family members who aren't technical, uh, by all means, give them that because it's been getting rave reviews everywhere. But if you're the type of person who's technical, you don't mind buying some components, you don't mind putting stuff together yourself and loading software, getting your legally acquired ROMs from your backup hardware, um, <laughs> then you can download RetroPie. Uh, just throw that into your search engine of choice, it'll pop right up. So I got a Raspberry Pi 3 for Christmas. Uh, it's got Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in, it's got HDMI hooks directly to the TV. If you don't know what a Raspberry Pi is, it's a tiny, teeny, tiny micro computer um it's smaller than you know any laptop you've ever seen uh, if you haven't seen one of these things and the best part it's 35 bucks it's probably like five or ten bucks for a case to go around it but 35 bucks for a whole computer um you load this retro pie software on it and it does all kinds of emulation uh nes genesis mame n64 playstation uh, you, everything in between, you're probably not going to get above N64 performance out of it. Even some N64 games don't really want, run that well. Um, but if you're looking for NES and Super NES games, which I was, uh, this will work perfectly. And because it's got Bluetooth, uh, if you saw our podcast last week, uh, the Bluetooth NES controller I was talking about works wonderfully with it. Uh, it's easy to get up and running. It is free. Uh, it's open source. So if you're looking to build a main cabinet or build something um, you know, to, to play your custom games on, by all means, check out RetroPie. I can't recommend it enough. Very cool. So in actual Nintendo news, it's been announced and a lot of the details have been leaked. Splatoon 2. We're all ready. <laughs> the Nintendo Switch, March 3rd. Pre-orders have already came and for the most part went. Um, by the time I had woke up on the West Coast, um, tar or Target had already sold out of the red-blue pack. All they had was gray. And then within the next hour when I checked, it was already gone. Wow. So I have not made my pre-order yet. And I'm a little pissed off because we all know how Nintendo is with hardware production. In any other case, I would yell at you for pre-ordering anything, but this is Nintendo we're talking about, and unless you get a pre-order, you're going to wait three months to get a piece of hardware. And it's not like you're pre-ordering a thing you can download, right? Nintendo actually has to, you know, ship this through a factory and put it in a box and throw it on the shelf. So, I'm not so, going to pre-order. There were some cool things that came out of this. Um, I think, Tom, you have compiled a high-level list already. Yes. yes, I have. So I want to go through the topics, like, stupid quick, just listing the topics, and then we can hit the ones that we really want to go in-depth on. All right. You guys ready? Here we go. I was um, born ready. So uh, we've got a big list of games. We'll go through those one at a time. Uh, but the big stuff is pricing. 300 bucks at launch uh, comes with a system, uh, the left weird controller broken in half thing, the right controller broken in half thing, and the middle thing that they can connect to. Um, the controller pricing for a left half, 40 bucks, right half is 40 bucks, and the centerpiece is 30 bucks. So for a complete controller, left, right, and center, you're looking at 110 bucks. If you want a standard controller that looks just like a 360 controller, it's going to be 70. Um, 
Nintendo is finally killing off free online play. So the PC is the last bastion of free multiplayer. Uh, if you want uh, to play Nintendo games online, you will have to pay. Now, initially, until they're saying about the fall is when they're estimating, um, you will be able to sign up for a free trial of their service. With the free trial, um, you will get a free uh, SNES or NES game. That said, it doesn't work like PS Plus or Games for Gold, uh, where they give you a free game as long as you're a paying customer, and you get to keep it as long as you continue being a paying customer. Uh, Nintendo says, hey, here's this NES game, uh, but we don't really want you to have it beyond a month. So you get it for that month, and then it goes away, which is really shitty. Uh, I heard a rumor that you would be able to buy them at a discount, but yeah. Um, there's some gimmicky shit that we'll get into. It's powered by Tegra, which we knew before. Um, battery life estimated to be between two and a half to six hours, depending on the game. Uh, and I guess, do you want to get into games or should we cover this high level stuff first? Well, there's also some other stuff that uh, was announced. That's really cool. Um, it will use NFC to talk to other switches. Since this is a mobile esque game platform, it can link up to eight switches at once. That's so really you nice. can have yeah. eight people. If you know eight people with a Switch, all come together, can all play together. All eight and people that have a Nintendo Switch can come together. <laughs> but no, I thought that was actually a really, really cool thing that they've done. Oh, for um, sure. I, it brings back System Link. I'm always a fan of bringing back System Link. They they made a very big point on online. They made lots of references to online during their presentation last night. I'm they, I'm afraid. I'm not. So they're doing what they've needed to do the whole time. Paid service, you actually put the money into the infrastructure and you make it worth a damn. When it's free, it's garbage. The PlayStation Network was fucking garbage for a long time. Xbox was the only one who got it right out of the gates. That I will agree with. Do, um, they, do and, they still charge for Xbox Live or did they stop yes. doing that? Okay, I wasn't 60 sure. 60 bucks a year. I'm so out of touch. <laughs> 60 bucks a year is, is nothing for, you know, the... I don't want to say stability, because as soon as I say stability in Xbox Live, they're going to get hacked and go down again. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, it, yeah. for, for a paid service, it's relatively stable. Um, there's not a whole lot to complain about with Xbox Live, other than, you know, the people you're playing with. But what are you going to do, right? Right. To reduce some game fuel. <laughs> Um, what I'm afraid of is Nintendo and online, uh, right? Nintendo has been chronically 10 years behind the times, if not more. Uh, they just discovered there's some guy that ran to the boardroom a couple years ago and they said, holy shit, guys, did you know computers can be connected together and talk? And then Nintendo just went like absolutely batshit and crazy. And they went, oh my God, we've got to put the internet in these. Um, so what I'm really afraid of is that Nintendo is going to rebrand the Nintendo Wi-Fi connection, which is the system that you've been using regardless of whether or not it's been called that. That was the original system, and it hasn't changed. Uh, my fear is that they're going to, you know, dump, uh, dump the gun, relaunch it with a different name, charge people for it, and then hope it gets better later, or hope that people forget they're paying for it. And people are just going to abandon I think it's going to be more of uh, the Miiverse thing they launched on phones. I think this is going to be the front end to their online. I think they're going to integrate that, and that's honestly, I think, why they wanted it to be a smartphone app. They've yeah, already, they're already in that space. Let's talk about that, right? Because no one else is doing this, right? With with Xbox and the PlayStation, they've got companion apps, right? So if you wanted to log into your uh, Xbox Live account and do stuff or send messages, you can. With the Switch, what they're saying initially, and this is all subject to change until it launches, right? Um, but what they're saying is, oh, voice chat? You don't want voice chat on a console. That would be crazy. No, you want to use some shitty Skype imitation on your phone <laughs> through a Nintendo app that's half-baked that doesn't really work to do your voice chat and matchmaking. What the fuck, Nintendo? So they never well, said matchmaking. They never said matchmaking was going to be through the phone. 
They said right. what the phone was going to do is allow you to set up times and dates with your friends. It would tie into the calendars on the phone and actually set events for individuals saying, hey, I'm supposed to play Splatoon with Tom today. I didn't tell like twice that I've actually needed to set a calendar event for something gaming related. And both of those were raids and wow. And there's a reason I only did two of them. And it's because I was shit. Um, but I, I, I don't get that. But the, the voice chat on the phone thing makes absolutely no sense to me. No sense whatsoever. And I'm, I'm hoping uh, that that's just something that was said. Everyone's going to go, what the hell, Nintendo, and they're going to fix it. Because the Switch is technically capable of doing voice chat through a wireless headset. It is technically capable of pulling that off. There's no reason it can't do that. Unless it is truly, truly, truly underpowered. I mean, it's not going to be that underpowered. It's, it's less than the PS4 and Xbox One. But, I mean, they had voice chat since the Xbox OG. So, I mean, it's, it's not something that takes a whole lot of horsepower. Yeah. I know, but why, why would you build it into the phone? Yeah. I think... Yeah, the question Nintendo, is, I think, too, why? Like, you're saying, why? Like, Nintendo why? has got one guy that loves making apps. <laughs> and, and he's, like, the CEO's cousin or something, or, or nephew. <laughs> and he's like... Man, we could just put voice chat like in an app on the phone, and the guy's like, "Uh huh, sure, John, you can do that. Go right ahead." <laughs> There's, I don't know why you would do this. It literally makes no sense. It makes the whole system annoying to use. The reason I use a console is so I don't have other shit to distract me. Right? I've got my one hundred and ten dollar controller, which I am going to rant on later, and <laughs> I hit a button. I'm playing Zelda, and Urk calls me and says, hey, it's Splatoon time, and I say, let's do this thing. I'm a kid, not a squid. <laughs> you really had to say that. I did. I just did. You just had to throw it in there. Uh, I don't even own but, Splatoon. Yeah, I, I've, I've never, never played, played it. It. It, yeah. looked, it looked really good, though. I watched uh, the Treehouse. Um, they were streaming it live today. And it looks fun. It looks good. I've heard the it first was one was great. I mean, it's not a very technical shooter. It's not going to be your uh, Counter Strikes and well, yeah, Clancy's. But it's it looks very fun. It's I, I think Nintendo put a brand new IP. That's you know one of the main reasons I love it is Nintendo tried something new. Yeah, it's like turf wars where you have to try to have the most area covered. It's just really cool. But, yeah, so I want to get into that controller rant because I feel that you're looking (laughs) at it a different way than I am. Because to you, you're viewing it as one controller for 110. I buy that controller for 110, and then right there, I can play four-player Mario Party or Mario Kart. Just from buying that 110, boom, I got four-player Mario Kart. How do you have four-player well, Mario Kart with two halves of the controller? Yeah, that's what each I'm... <laughs> half. Each half operates as a full controller. Okay. Yes, yeah, no, I get that. I get that. But that's still two pieces, right? It's, oh, so you're saying with the one included in the box? Yes. Right? Yes. So for what? Or you can do overcook style. You can have four people playing Mario Kart on tiny little uncomfortable controllers. I would rather than, I don't know. It's Mario Kart. You don't need a whole lot for that. I, it's I not like it, you're but... playing a fighter. <sighs> I get it, but why? Why not just... Nintendo had to have, be different. Have a more reasonably priced regular controller. I guess they have the regular one, but it's not going to be compatible with some of the other games, right? Right. I th- also, th- it's 70 bucks for the Pro. And it sounds like some of the gimmicky games it won't go with. Yeah. But this is also, I think, people are just afraid of prices to go up. True. I mean, people are so set in the ways of a controller should be 50 bucks. I mean, because they've been 50 bucks. Based on what they've showed, though, I could see how it would be more expensive. There's a lot, a lot going into those little controllers. You've got the, the hand detection thing. Uh, why sensor this okay yeah that is that is stupid as fuck <laughs> i understand we're, we're gonna go why. i understand the whys but from a, a technical perspective there's 
there's a lot that goes into these controllers that would probably drive the cost up naturally. So it's so, not like they're putting out crappy little plastic things that don't do anything. And we're like, here, give us yes, a million dollars for this with the adapter. Remember the the <laughs> PS2, GameCube, and Xbox, you could buy a controller and they were 30 bucks. You can get, you know, an off-brand or used one for like 20, right? Mm-hmm. And for older systems like Genesis, Super Nintendo, it was usually 20, 30 bucks for a controller there too. Um, with the 360, it was you know, 50 bucks for a controller. And then it was 50 bucks for a wireless controller, which was even better. Um, and that was kind of, especially when the 360 first came out, that was kind of painful. I'm going to spend as much on a controller as I would for a game. Are you nuts? But people got used to it because the 360 controller to this day is one of the best controllers ever made. And then, you know, the DualShock 3 followed up. We're not going to go into whatever the 6-axis, no shock, whatever was. Um, but the DualShock 3 followed that same suit. And then you carried on to the X-Bone and the PS4. Um, Nintendo, uh, at least with the Wiimote, has always been... Nintendo's controllers have always been more expensive. Right? The Wiimote with Nunchuck was 60 bucks. If you wanted a regular controller, you add on another 30 to that for like the pro classic thing. But I don't they get also why had a still lot more this. tech. They always had yeah. more they, tech in they the did, that, that was, more involved. That was the excuse. But Nintendo right now is selling an Xbox 360 controller, something that should be if we follow the standard price line, right? I can buy a great 360 controller today for 30 bucks, right? Because it's it's not the newest thing anymore and i i get that but they're now selling a 360 controller for 70 bucks this isn't the no, split no, in half no. thing this isn't anything weird you can't view it like that you're looking Why? at two generations ago the dualshock 4 cost 60 dollars i mean you're neglecting the whole fact this is a new console it's going to have new prices you it's, can't it's hold a it to the console. old and say, no, you're raising the price on me. I got a bitch. <laughs> I have to pay the same. I've always paid. <laughs> the, fact that something, the fact that something is new does not mean that it's automatically more expensive, right? The technology, yeah. the build that goes into that controller is literally no more advanced than what goes into a 360 controller today. Not true. What does that not pro true. controller have? That the 360 they controller have doesn't. They have motion control in the pro. And they also got the HD rumble so, in the So pro. does the DualShock 3. Okay, not, not the bullshit. DualShock 3 does not have motion thing. control. <laughs> yeah, yeah it need- does. It's got the six-axis bullshit built into it. Okay, but it right. doesn't have the HD rumble right. still. But look at how much the DualShock 4 is. Okay. I'm just saying, I, you can't look at something and say, well, you know what? Something and, else is already priced this. You okay. have to be the same price. Okay, even even at 70, that's not really my main concern, right? That's that's annoying, but it's not my main concern. My main concern is 110 bucks to get two waggle sticks that you can bind together, right? You you tape two Wiimotes together, and I, I realize it's a little more than that, and you can milk cows with it, which by the way, uh yeah. <laughs> the cow milk oh. thing. Oh my wow. god, I hope I still have that link. I'm I'm gonna post that in Twitch chat here for you guys. Um but yeah, why why would you buy just one half of this? Is what I don't get because I don't unless you break one, you're not just going to buy one half ever, right? That's the only way. That has got to be the only way you ever buy a solo is that you break the damn thing. Yeah. Now I could see people buying uh, the left and the right, but not buying the grip adapter. Thing. Yeah, I could get that because so you could you use the other separate. to charge them. Yeah, you can charge them up with the other one when you're not using it because you can hold them separately and play, which is pretty cool. Yeah, um, that part is kind of neat. That would probably be a little awkward, though, because you yeah. wouldn't have anything grip locking them to your hand. To where if you go to hit something lower oh. on the, I don't know. One hundred, one hundred and ten bucks for for a complete controller is absolutely that's ridiculous. Right? That's you could get two games, or you could get a controller. And I, and I a think charge station, though, you, you do get a charge station. Those things are about 20, 30 bucks. Why? There's no reason they have to be 20, 30 bucks. Why? I. I charge my my DualShock 3 by plugging it in. 
And I, I get, I get they're different. I get they're different. I get it's not the same thing, but, uh, you know, this is the killer of the switch, right? If you said 300 bucks, $50 controller, here you go. It's, you know, in the box, it has everything. I'd be like, yeah, I get it. That's awesome. Even if you said the switch controller with all three pieces was 70 bucks, I get it. It's more than a game, but I understand, right? But 110 bucks makes me start to think, holy shit, this is really fucking expensive to own one of these. If I want four complete controllers and a system, I'm spending $600. There's no reason not to buy the pros, to be honest. The only reason you need the waggle sticks is if you're playing a game that takes it. And most of those view the only use one. How else am I going to milk cows with eight people <laughs> on one console? And I'm posting that into Twitch <laughs> chat right now. So uh, you guys can enjoy that. that was well, good. I will also in the show notes. Um, if you haven't seen this gif, uh, it's literally of two guys staring at each other and sensually milking a digital cow holding their switch controllers. And people in the chat are pulling out really good point. You're looking $600 for a console and four controllers anyway, right now. That's true. That's, That's true. true. I'm, I'm not even thinking that the switch is really cheap compared to the PS4 and, and X bone. Um, and I'm not going to stop calling it X bone. So and stop the, asking. Build, the build quality might be fantastic. They might be. We can durable, basically be guaranteed you know. of that. Yeah. So, well, cause this I'll is a say Nintendo this. system. The Wii U, I, the first time I went to pick up a Wii U pad, I thought this is going to probably be the most uncomfortable game pad I've ever held in my life. No, mm-hmm. but they're great. And it actually felt great. Yeah. It looks terribly awkward, but it feels <laughs> great. Nintendo yeah. gets it when it comes to ergonomics. They get it. Yeah. Nintendo systems. The part where they're claiming that half of the Joy-Con will be perfectly fine to use. If, if I... And I, I know I complain a lot about Nintendo because I love Nintendo. I want them to succeed. And it really pisses me off when they fuck up basic shit. Uh, <laughs> but Nintendo systems have always had two things in spades guaranteed for every console minus the Virtual Boy. Um, when you buy a Nintendo console, you can beat the shit out of it. right? I sent my, my Game Boy Advance uh, in my DS you know, through washing machines as a kid several times and they just keep on ticking right (laughs) my gamecube has had more crashes from an entertainment center onto a concrete basement floor more times than i can count it's still working it's back there i plugged it in to play rogue squadron the other day it works perfectly um you know the the s uh in in game boy have always been rock solid platforms um and Nintendo's games that they put out are always great. And the consoles always feel good to use, whether it's controller or handheld. No matter what it is, it feels good to use. Even the N64, all you haters can go fuck yourselves. Um, I, I think it'll be console without the price. I just don't know if it's got the games to sustain itself. I, ho- I hope. Okay, so I, was, I hope it does. I, I was actually going to get to that point. Um, the launch titles. So. I know you two were asleep. I was on West Coast, so I was given the luxury to be able to watch it at 8 o'clock. Um, the games they were showing, first up, the big title they showed um, was Splatoon. And it's a summer release. So I'm like, okay. So next up's Mario. I'm thinking, okay, Mario's going to be launch. And then Mario is going to be holiday. And I'm like, oh shit, what are they going to get? And then Square Enix comes up to show Dragon Quest. And that's a Japan-only release. I'm like, what the fuck's going on? (laughs) The only game they showed on release during that entire event was Zelda. Zelda is the only launch title that they showed off there. I mean, they showed off like the 1-2 Switch and stuff like that. But the only like big AAA thing you're waiting for is Zelda. Yeah, which... Okay, so... I do want to get into games. I'm trying to avoid getting into games. Um, <laughs> Zelda is a big launch title, uh, but it does not sell systems. Um, one, this two, one does. This one does. I'm having this trouble disagreeing with you. Really I'm having a lot of trouble disagreeing with you. Um, this Zelda sells. I, I, I was 
I was anti Switch the entire time after I'm reading, you know, the, the costs involved and thinking it's Nintendo system. There's no third party support. There's like two launch titles, uh, you know, one of which I'm interested in. I, I'm not going to buy this. And then I watched the Breath of the Wild trailer, the new one. I'm like, oh my God, I have to have this day one. <laughs> yeah. It, it looks so good. It looks like Skyrim I could actually give a shit about because they finally started throwing in, like, hey, there are characters. It's not just you in an empty field doing cool stuff. It's you in a field doing cool stuff with your friends, right? With, with yeah. people from the Zelda universe. You're going to meet cool people and do cool stuff. And there's, you know, a Zelda esque, so it's not the deepest thing, but there's a Zelda story involved, and oh my god, I can't wait! And it's beautiful, so the only, it's so gorgeous, it really is. And uh, Nintendo only leaked footage of one other game that I caught, uh, first party to them, because I don't think Xenoblade's them, but uh, F Zero. There was yes. footage of a new F Zero game during the release last night. Oh my and god, I love F Zero. I, I would only be more excited if they, you know, showed like even like three frames of Samus doing anything, like cooking eggs <laughs> yeah. or something, right? And just be like, oh my god, it's a Samus cooking game. We're gonna get something Metroid related. Generation oh, Force doesn't count. Though well, if they get the Zelda out, Splatoon 2 will be fun, a new Mario, and they if they get a Smash Brothers out That's within it. the next year. That right there is enough for me to be happy for a good year and a half, two years, and then, okay, give me something else. Yeah, give me some Mario. Give me some Mario Maker. I want to see a re-release HD Mario Maker, which, by the way, uh, Nintendo did decide to do the proper thing, and they took the best Mario Kart game ever created, Mario Kart 8. They're adding new stuff, they're giving it some graphical polish, and that will be coming to the Switch. Oh, that is true, and that, um, I think I saw a release date of holiday time as well. Yeah, which I, I can't... I hate release dates. I hate release dates yeah. from everyone. I can't blame Nintendo. It's an industry-wide thing. All release dates are, are just, yeah, we might do it then. Who knows? It'll just come out when it comes out. And right. that's why I think the Switch will be released in six years. We'll see the next Mario game probably by the time <laughs> I'm 90, 95. That's what I'm planning on. Um, but, you know, when they say, you know, it'll come out holiday, it'll be holiday 2027. Yeah. Oh, it's but weird. I mean, with it's Mario... Weird. It's weird that it's releasing in March. That seems like such a weird time to release a console. I think they're doing it um, literally because nothing happens. Uh, so, yeah. so you're almost you're getting into the sort of springtime, summertime drought in gaming, mm -hmm. where you're way past the holiday season. You're past the the clearing out sales. Um, it's it, March is almost a dead zone for game releases. The only mm -hmm. better time would be July or August, uh, but they could really get people interested in buying this because the timing is just correct. Yeah. Um, and there is also, um, I'll see in the chat, it's corrected, it is April will be the Mario Kart release. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, and oh. something was said about them needing multiplayer. There is no Mario Party on launch. But they do have a really cool um, multiplayer game. It's going to be this arena boxing game. I can't remember what it was oh, called. Um, oh, what was it called? Long Arms. Arms? Um, I think it was just arms. Yes, arms, arms, arms. It's like you got go-go gadget arms in your boxing. That looked pretty it cool, actually. It looked that really actually fun. Looked pretty good. I did not watch the trailer for this. I did not see it. Definitely looked yeah, that it's, up. It looks like... Um, it makes me think of like Super Monday Night Combat kind of look at meets Overwatch kind of polish. Okay. And then... Um, when you go to punch, you have like this inspector gadget arm that goes out and then you can guide the punch with the controller. So you have both of them and then you can jump and dodge and stuff with the controllers. So it looks like you could actually get into kind of like a um, really strategic dance with it. So it's one of those games that looks like it Well, they touted that it will grow with you kind of like Rocket League, where as nice. you get better, you can do different things. Mm -hmm. um, so. We we covered a, a little bit of games, and before we get like heavy into the main games that everyone wants to hear about, tell me about all the gimmicky shit because you paid way more attention. You saw the full press conference. What the fuck is Nintendo doing now? Do I have to okay, waggle? So. Do I have to waggle? Can I waggle <laughs> a <Most> cow utter? <laughs> so waggle anything that is only anything that is only for the Wii or Wow, sorry, 
Whoa, slip, Freudian hey. slip. Anything that is only <laughs> for the Switch, there is going to be that risk. Um, the big AAA shit, I don't think you have to worry. But stuff like um, Splatoon, not Splatoon, um, 1 2 Switch. That's one of the gimmicky looking things, but I'm going to reserve judgment because it looks really fucking weird. <laughs> um, but they have this sensor at the front of the, the uh, controller that will pick up hand gestures. So I, I don't understand the point of it. It's like you're doing fucking shadow puppets or something and it picks it up. I mean, you can play rock, paper, scissors is what they said. Why the fuck would I buy a Nintendo Switch to play rock, paper, scissors with someone across the fucking country? It's fucking Nintendo because they thought it was a good idea to re-release NES games on playing cards. Yes, I bought an e-reader. <laughs> so um, it still supports Amiibos. Um, they saw the chip. Um, they have position. I will get on this on the Joy-Cons. Their home button is on the right side, right underneath the joystick. So if your thumb slips off the joystick downward, you can hit the home button. Yeah, it's that's... a really bad positioning in my mind. I'm hoping, um, but I'm it hoping like this doesn't it hurt anything. Are you talking about the little square button? Yeah, on the right side controller, not the left. Oh, okay. The left was a screen, they have a screen capture button. Okay, that's what I'm thinking of. Because it looked like it was flush against the controller, so it wouldn't be as likely to be accidentally pressed. They probably do that with the other one, too. I just didn't notice it. I didn't get a yeah, really close hopefully. look. But oh, the, the controllers weird. are where the gimmick is. It's yeah. a regular capacitive touchscreen um, thing, 720 resolution. Um, it didn't seem too many games were gimmicky. The arms uses the motion, but it didn't seem in a gimmicky fashion to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was just a boxing type game, pretty much. But that's uh, the HD. Oh, that that's the big one. The HD Rumble. They say that like um, it looked really fucking corny, but like mm-hmm. you're shaking it and it's a glass with an ice cube in it. You can feel the ice cube at the bottom. You're shaking it with two ice cubes. You can feel both ice cubes in it. You're shaking it with three ice cubes in it. You can feel all three ice cubes in it, and then you can feel it being poured up with water. It's like it's- they. What? I understand how that would seem really stupid, and it does, but I think it's just an, an analogy to kind of prepare people for what they might, for what they're trying to get across. I, Basically, what they're offering is a, a more in depth haptic feedback. Um, it could be cool for certain things. You just have to see how it gets used. And that's why I don't want to knock yeah, it yet, because right. I think that could be cool. That seems like the least gimmicky of the gimmicky things to me. Yeah, I I think it sounds like, you know, one of these little accent things. I mm-hmm. if I were Nintendo and I, you know, I don't want to be. Um I I wouldn't have made a big deal about HD Rumble in the press conference. I would have put it as an aside in a press release and maybe maybe in, include like a technical white paper saying, "Hey, here's some of the stuff you can do. Maybe show off some demos at, mm-hmm. at GDC or something." Uh, because I look at this feature and I think, how much time and money did you spend making this thing and what's it going to get me? That said, I thought, you know, the uh, dual screen handheld with one of the screens being a touch screen was the worst idea of all time. I bought it on launch, but I thought it was a terrible idea. It ended up being one of the best ideas Nintendo's ever come up with and it printed money. So I, I can't underestimate Nintendo. It should not have had the four to five minute slot it had in the press last night. It yeah. felt like that drug on forever. I'm like, yes, tell us about it and get the fuck out of the way. Yeah, yeah. it should have been a, a footnote in a white paper. But I'm still looking forward to see seeing what that develops into. It could, like I said, it could be interesting. I'm giving them benefit just because I want to see what they do. Yeah, this is as close to a normal console as they've had in a while. Yeah, it's so it, a lot of their big games don't seem to be laden in those gimmicks, right? And that's what I really hope to see them get well, away from. I'm not that, that much of a N- Nintendo guy, but all the gimmicky stuff of like the Wii, it just it doesn't appeal to me personally. So I'm, I'm happy to see them hopefully get a little bit away from that, or at least not make it the only driving point of the console. We don't the know one gimmick- though, if if. Nintendo is going to really push these gimmicks hard in first party games because think about it. Their launch title, they can't gimmick size it, right? It has to be compatible with the Wii U because that's where it's coming out on first. 
Right. We use supports motion. It does support it does. motion, but I'm saying like all the HD rumble stuff and you know breaking the controller in half because you're frustrated, whatever. All the stuff specific to the Switch they can't use in the Zelda game because it has to be compatible. They could try to shoehorn it in like they did with Twilight Princess, but it can't be fully Switch driven. Mario I'm, can, Zelda can't. I honestly would not be surprised if Zelda was made for the Switch and dumbed down for the Wii U. And it's a reverse port. It didn't do that with um, with Twilight Princess. Twilight, Twilight Princess. Princess was a GameCube game through and through. Um, they just, you know, cranked up a few settings for the Wii. Um, Honestly, it, was it, the GameCube yeah. stronger than the Wii? No, the GameCube no. and Wii are it's a little like like marginally more horsepower, but it wasn't like a you know Xbox to 360 or 360 to Xbone jump by any means. The Wii is literally a slimmed down GameCube, is the way you can think of the performance. Um, so much so that it shared hardware, like it was the same platform underneath. But yeah, it's we'll say it'll be interesting. I'm hesitantly I'm, optimistic for the Switch though. I I I like the one console for the mobile and in home gaming. That's pretty cool. Yes. There's there's something I wanted to talk about with this. Um, so back in the day, Nintendo when they were announcing uh, the dual screen, the Nintendo dual screen, uh, people had the question of, "Hey, you already have a handheld. What happens to the Game Boy Advance?" Are you killing the Game Boy Advance? They didn't want to scare away developers. They definitely didn't want to scare away consumers. They said, no, it's going to be a three-pillar system. We've got our home console, we've got our dual-screen handheld, and then we've got our normal Game Boy handheld. And we all know how that ended up, right? The DS ruined, destroyed, ate the Game Boy's lunch, right? There is no more Game Boy line. It was killed by the DS, which is okay, because the DS is a great system. but I think Nintendo is starting to do the same thing, right? They're, they're not coming out and saying, hey, uh, we're murdering the DS, or we're co- totally getting rid of this idea. Um, I think that's what's going to happen. Um, they, but, they've come out and they've said, hey, we're going to have the DS and the Switch. The DS isn't going to live for very much longer. Um, they have they're already one taking system steps. now. Yeah. yeah. The, um, if you, um, I've heard reports that the 3DS is hard to come by now. Mm. that stores are not able to keep them in stock very long, that they're only getting a couple in, and then they're gone. The Nintendo likes to say, just like they did with the three-pillar strategy that they, they touted during the, the DS announcement, they don't want to scare off consumers so they can't just come out and say, yeah, we're murdering your, the system you love, um, but they're murdering the system you love. And that's, right. that's so, okay, and- right? That's all right. You're getting a replacement. So what about battery life? So I haven't, I haven't within, mobile gamed in a long time, and I know they're not even comparable, but what sort of battery life do you get out of like a DS? A I think DS? it all depends on how you tune it. Right. I get probably six hours, five to six hours out of my DS. Yeah. For, and that's with the brightness the new, down. The new ones are so much better. The original 3DS, I was getting about two hours, which was really yeah. painful. I, I was um, wondering the how, nice how thing, much lower the, the, what is it, two and a half to six hours estimated, depending on the game for the Switch. I was yeah, wondering how yeah. much lower that would be than like a, whatever the last DS console. It won't be drastically worse, but right. there is this note. It also has a USB Type-C adapter that mm-hmm. you could charge off of. So much quicker charge. And you can also charge off of a uh, power bank exactly. if you have a portable hard drive thing, or not hard drive, portable battery. I think that's, that's the cool. thing I'm looking forward to the most with the Switch is it's it's a tablet, right? It's just, uh, it, you could treat it like an Android tablet, you know, get a USB battery pack, get a nice case for it, mm-hmm. um, get a stylus if you really need. Um, yeah. I, I'm waiting to see the, the accessories that third parties come up with. I think it's going to be really nice. Yeah. I can imagine a, a battery case and it, you know, increase the thickness because the switch is pretty thin, but you know, mm-hmm. gives it gives it a nice buffer. So if you drop it, it's fine. But you know, increase the thickness by double, and the whole thing, the whole back plate's a battery, and now yeah. you've doubled your battery life. That would be fantastic. 
I want to see statistics uh, after it's been out a while. Like how many people primarily use it on their TVs at home and how many people primarily use it as a mobile console. It's like if I and got I'd one, have... if I got one, I would probably almost never connect it to my TV. I would probably just always play it connected to this, the, the controllers connected to the screen mobile. Yeah, but you get better performance out of it on TV. Yeah. At least true. like uh, visual. Yeah. I just, I. <sighs> This is a 72 pin connector. I can say whatever the hell I want. <laughs> I'm, I'm really looking We're not forward affiliated. To, I'm, I'm really looking forward to sitting back on my couch playing Breath of the Wild. And then I'm like, oh shit, it's time. And I can take that console. I can take it to the bathroom. And I can play it in the bathroom. And then when I get out, I can dock that system again and then go back to playing Zelda. There will be no time when I am without a Zelda game. And there was no time for him washing his hands either in that None. story. Keep None. in mind. Uh, boss yeah. Do not man. touch Tom's switch. Boss battles. You, you can't put it down. There is no pausing. Don't make me buy a $110 Joy-Con set just to come over to your house to play on your no. switch. <laughs> Actually, um, don't bring over any Nintendo controllers to my house. As, uh, as Eric knows, oh, I was, the bitch steals them. Yes. <laughs> you thief. Um... So I, I do want, uh, before we close it out, I want to go into some of the games. Um, because uh, we do have to talk uh, a bit about Zelda. Um, we definitely have to talk about Mario. Um, <laughs> and I do want to mention casually, uh, look up the trailer for Sonic Mania that Nintendo announced. Oh, that it looks is, so good. It is not a Switch exclusive. Um, Adam, how did you put it earlier today? I think you put it rather succinctly. Um, yeah, it was basically, they're like, why do Sonic games suck now? Sonic used to be such a cool game. And then they were like, well, maybe because it's 3D Sonic sucks, and we don't need all these stupid, useless characters. <laughs> so Sonic Mania is basically, a, it's 2D, just like the old games. It it Really, it looks like a, a Genesis game. It looks like the old Sonic games, visually. Yes. Uh, three characters. Sonic, Tails, Knuckles. All you need. That's it. Um, all the levels are, are kind of visually inspired by the old levels. You'll get a new Green Hill Zone. You'll get a new, uh, probably like a Casino Night sort of place. And some new areas, chemical too. Chemical Plant. Yeah, Chemical Plant Zone all day. So it, it looks so good, though. Look at it. And they even added a new mechanic. The, uh, the oh, what do they call it? Like the down dash? Yeah. Or the jump dash? It's, you can yeah. land and then dash right from a landing. Yeah. Looked nice. cool. It looks like it. I mean, it's, it's something that it fits perfectly into that, you know, Genesis era Sonic. Yes. But it's still an it's innovation. New. It's still it's something new. new. It's a new old Sonic game, and I, I couldn't be happier. <laughs> like I Sonic was, Generations, but I hated all the 3D parts of Sonic yeah. Generations. This gives me everything I want. Oh, it's so good. I was such a Genesis kid, so this is just right up my alley. I cannot wait. So, not a Switch exclusive. Sonic Mania. Watch the trailer. It looks amazing. Um, <clears throat> let's. I'm going to end on a high note, so I want to finish with Zelda. Um, <laughs> because I have literally nothing bad to say about that. Uh, but I do want to talk about Sonic 06. I mean, um, Mario. Let's talk about Mario. <laughs> the first part of that trailer threw me for a loop. Yeah, it did. Um, so uh, if, if you, you have Mario in wow. what appears to be a modern day city, open world Mario city. <laughs> not like not like Mushroom Kingdom blocks. Like you stick Mario into the middle of fucking Liberty City kind yeah. of city. Like you know those those GTA mods where you can have Mario running around killing people in San Andreas. <laughs> That's what this looks Kinda like. Kind of what it looked like. I'm surprised they did that at the very beginning of the trailer. Yeah, yeah, it was really off. Like at first, the I'm hell? like, wait a minute, what is this? And then halfway through, when they started showing the other areas, I'm like, oh, okay. Even thematically, that kind of makes sense, but. Really? That's what you first show? Like, the, the big city doesn't even look like it belongs in a Mario game. It looks semi-realistic. It looks like they're... Yeah. It's, it's realism for the PS3 era is what it tries to look like. Um, like GTA 4 sort style. Of. It looked a little bit more cartoony than that, but yeah. I can see what you mean. 
But the mechanics of it, though, still look fantastic. Oh, yeah. Oh, even yeah. with I the mean, weird look. The hat, yeah, the hat the, thing looked cool. The jumping and throwing the hat and bouncing on enemies and running from bullet pills. I mean, it, it still looks like a Mario game. It looks like it plays like a Mario game, I should say. But it's a Mario game set in GTA. Until you get to the weird temple run stages, which looks like something out of Sonic Adventure. It, yeah. And or then you, you get, get to the, the forest jungle. area that looks like something out of <laughs> Uncharted or something. Yeah. I, it, it, it seems to have like, these thematically very visually different areas. I'm but hoping that that's, that's part of like a story thing that they build in. Like yeah. Mario accidentally gets transported to a realistic world because they do yeah. have in the trailer their fair <laughs> share of you know, brightly colored, blocky Mario areas that look exactly like they came from, you know, Mario Galaxy or mm. even Mario 3 in some cases. Um, and they look great. It looks exactly how Mario should look. That said, the city is still really off-putting because you there's a, a picture out there of Mario, and you'll see this in the trailer, standing next to, like, a regularly proportioned human. Yeah. Like some guy in a business suit. Like, and then the, the forest fuck? area with, fuck. like, the the semi-realistic looking grass and stuff. Yeah, it's it's it hit the uncanny valley. It just it doesn't yeah. look right. I don't know what it is. And, and well, maybe that's seen... part of it. Maybe that's the point too. Yeah. Yeah, the, they said about the, he's lo- leaving the mushroom kingdom and like this yeah. quest he's on is taking him outside of the kingdom. It it's interesting. Um, I mean, I I don't think that they would royally fuck up a Mario game. Nintendo, I don't think they've ever royally fucked up a Mario game. Nintendo, not Phillips. Um, <laughs> I I don't know. It's it did not leave me with a good impression. Um, it reminded me of a lot of good. Sonic 06. I thought it looked good. The street was weird, but other than that, it looked great. The mechanics look good, and that's the most important thing on a Mario game. True. Yeah. So, let's so I want to call out one game real quick. Yeah. Okay. Um, was brought up in chat. I saw this. I was put off by it. Um, there's bundles on GameStop for six hundred bucks. Comes with a few games. Averages out to forty dollars a game. One of the games is actually forty bucks that I saw, and it's The Binding of Isaac: Afterbirth. Yeah. That game has no business selling for $40. Go to your fucking computer and get it. Much for cheaper. 15? Is it 15? I guess it's Afterbirth Plus, so it would come with both expansions. So that puts it at... Well, I mean, that puts it 35. Each expansion is what? 10, is it Afterbirth bucks? Plus? I'm pretty sure it is, yeah. Yeah, that it's it's garbage. I think that's stupid, though. I no way. I'm not paying that for Isaac. Already got it for one, but two is just. Yeah. I would love to be able to play that game mobile, though. I would play that everywhere. Yeah. And V uh, yeah, mentioned Earth Plus, so that that at least helps it a little bit. V uh in in chat and and Eric, I believe you were mentioning this today. Um, definitely does not fit in with the standard Nintendo way of no. doing things. No, no, no. This is a very dark game about killing your mother. It's got memes Sorry, spoiler, and Satan maybe? and poop and more Shit biblical, everywhere. dark biblical themes and sacrifices. <laughs> great game. Oh, it's a great game. Really great game. Are they turning over a new leaf? I mean, I guess they've always had, you know, mature titles, but this is this is launch. This is front and center. Kill your mother. Well, <laughs> honestly, it's one of their bigger launch titles, which yeah. to me is kind of a bad thing, but well, yeah. yeah. I'm hoping third party support really helps this take off a little better because they have to have third party support. Third party the support only... without the even if they're not exclusives, just third party support that doesn't involve all the gimmicky stuff. I think they'll get those. Give me EA's a de- bringing FIFA. Give me a decent portable game console with a good selection of games. And the that's the one thing that the DS line uh, has always had in spades. The 3DS less than the DS, but mm-hmm. um, Nintendo third party or third party uh, portable consoles have always had fantastic third party support. A because it's so easy and cheap to build those games, and B because they sell. Um, but let's. 
Let's talk Zelda um, real quick. Uh, if you've seen, there's like a bunch of like hours and hours and hours of gameplay you can watch. Uh, this trailer did not focus on any gameplay at, on Breath of the Wild at all. It was a story trailer. They showed people. Um, they went into, you know, the basic high level glossing over the Zelda story. Um, it is set in the Wind Waker timeline. Uh, it appears to be 100 years after the end of Wind Waker. Which is really cool, because to me, that's the most interesting Zelda timeline uh, of all time. That's the one when Gandalf wins, right? Gandalf? Did you? Gandalf? Did you? Gandalf? Sorry, sorry, I always say that. <laughs> oh my god. Gandalf the White Close the in. podcast. We're, we're done. Yeah. We're done. <laughs> no, no. Uh, Ganondorf. Yes. Um, uh, no. I need to look at Hyrule Historia. I don't think I th- that's the one. It might be the one. Um, I'm going to pull this up. Uh, don't worry about it right now. Well, but, yeah, that looked very interesting. I was really happy with a lot of the stuff they showed. Um, no, the that visuals. is that is not the uh, the timeline where Ganondorf wins. He is <laughs> sealed in Ocarina of Time because the hero was successful. Um, but Ocarina of Time branches into the child path of Link and the adult path. This follows the adult path um, where Ganondorf is revived in Wind Waker, uh, and then there's a bunch of sea stuff with Phantom Hourglass, uh, and then Spirit Tracks happens. Uh, and then a hundred years after Wind Waker, it looks like um, the Earth is done flooding, and you get the Breath of the Wild area, which explains why Hyrule is so goddamn different. Um, it looks beautiful. Oh, the looks game so looks like it looks like a story I could actually give a shit about. Yeah, um, it does actually. Which I haven't, you know, uh, I'm not a Nintendo guy anyway, so. I haven't owned a Nintendo console since I was a little kid. Well, there's a good chance I go mobile. at. But, there's um, a good chance I go at this like I do Elder Scrolls, and not get yeah. two shits about the story, and just well, play it because it looks good. That too, but I'm actually interested in playing this Zelda game. The last Zelda game I played was A Link to the Past. <laughs> I I but this, Zelda games it looks good. Can, they can have really good, really deep stories if they try. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Ocarina of Time, not the best Zelda story, not the deepest Zelda story by any means. Majora's Mask, yes, but it's not the main quest, right? You, the main quest is there's an evil mask and you kill it, right? That's the story of Majora's Mask. The, the story of the Zelda games are all the little side characters you get into and the lives you infiltrate and learn about and... I could really see this, especially with the open world, becoming one of those. Um, so I was I was 100% against the Nintendo Switch. I was against buying it at all. Uh, and then I watched that trailer. And now I'm really trying not to pre-order it. <laughs> I'm trying to pre-order as soon as I Nintendo, find a place that right? has it still. <laughs> but that's oh. all I've got. I think that's all we have for it. I mean, there will be more that comes out, more games for to sure. discuss. Ho- hopefully they actually hit on that F-Zero that they talked about or showed a little of. Oh, yeah. Maybe maybe it's give Nintendo. us some Smash Brothers details. They're just teasing. They're never going to release <laughs> F-Zero. Then, for God's sake, at least put a Mario Party out soon. <laughs> I'm cautiously optimistic, uh, though. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. See what See what happens. I they better do it. They've ate up half of their free cash in the last three years, so <laughs> they've got to do something. Yeah. See, uh, and we'll report on it when it happens. So, I think that's all we have for this week. So, if you would like to um, get at us with some corrections or questions or just general comments, you can tweet at us at, at 72 PC Podcast. You can find our videos of all the pot priors and as well as uh, Tom's hardware review at 72 Pin Connector on YouTube. You can uh, email us at fanmail at 72 pinconnectorcom And you can always go to our website, 72 pinconnectorcom to see what we've been up to and the uh, recent posts we've made. So, with that, I think that's all we got. So, until next week, game on. Hey, everyone. Bye.